TR Tony here and the Ari the Stag team. Whee! Whee! We're heading up to the British Motor Museum. It's basically, we've been invited along to look at the um, last stag that came off the production line. <laughs> Exciting times. So uh, here it is in, in glorious racing green, I think it is, um, probably an official stag name for it I'm sure but uh, Lisa will go, we'll, we'll clarify that in a bit um, I'm sure but it's just absolutely immaculate as you can see with the uh, grey silver pinstripes it's the uh, the Mark II uh, chrome uh, brushed stainless uh, covers there on the sills immaculate uh, paintwork not a ding or a tent as you can see with the hard top featured and again we'll find out more later on having a look inside if we can for a moment just open the, the driver's door and as you can see there, it's got the fawn um, interior, so uh, absolutely, just, you, can't, you can't smell it, but the smell of it is just immense. Um, it smells absolutely glorious and uh, in first class condition. Obviously an automatic uh, with a Borg Warner gearbox, no doubt. Uh, don't know what the mileage is on there. Let's have a look at the mileage on the dash there. 16,540 miles, guys, so that's pretty cool. Um, one of the guys asked us in Australia whether or not this kind of air vent had a silver surround on the outside. I can't quite see actually if it's got one or not because there's, there's some reflection there but it um, looks to be as if there is or not James. What can yep. you see? There yeah, is. Yeah. Okay so yes it does. So that's all great. So uh, Harry take us away. Have a look under the bonnet there. Talk us through it Harry. What can you see? Uh, it's, it's original isn't it? It's nothing. No garish chrome pieces, no silly hose colours as, as it was how it was meant to be. As you can see a very original engine number there and um, hopefully if we get the chance we might get to see it in action um, driving out and around the grounds and you can see this car is that well polished and in that good condition you see the reflection of myself in reverse and James doing the cameraman work too. So we get just looking inside here um, I think you just appreciate no squeaks no grinds no bumps. Interior is as Triumph intended I think on the day it was built pretty much you can see just how tidy the car is. Yeah, rear seats again as you'd expect all standard and looking nice and neat. And then out to the uh, the boot lid again which looks up lovely. Again just a map that's inside. As we know on our cars there's often rust and rainwater in here. Nowhere to be seen on this car absolutely uh, fantastically uh, produced. You can just smell the um, that 1970s car smell is gorgeous, isn't it? And the bumpers, highly polished, as you'd expect. Looking really nice. There's some uh, twin pipes at the back there, exhaust pipes, which is really good. Nice clunk of the boot as you shut it. So that's a quick walk around. I can see waiting in the wings here we have Kat Griffin, who's the curator of the British Motor Museum. Hi. Hello Hi. Kat, nice to meet you. Nice you. Thanks ever so much for inviting us up and that's showing right, us around. Yeah. This was the last the last of the stags that came off the line at Canley. Uh, it was obviously, obviously a little bit before my time, um, but I think it just came straight here from there. So everything on it wow. is as was. Uh, in the factory. So V Red, do we know what year it was made? V O L A C V. Seventy-seven. This is just something else, just to see the condition of it and uh, see it at first hand. Absolutely fantastic. Martin here has been working here for uh, six years. Six, six years. So works in the in the workshop. A variety of classics, I believe. Yeah, yeah. For anything from sort of early nineteen hundred stuff right to modern day, really. Yeah. So what kind of challenges does that present? Uh, yeah. It's tricky. I, the earlier stuff's not as easy as people think it is. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And so there's a lot of fiddly bits to, to get right before they'll run properly. Yeah. Those cars, tend, if they've been stored for a long time, are actually easy to get out and get going. Yeah. Whereas you get more modern cars, say um, a Range Rover, 
with lots of sensors and stuff. Yeah. If that's been sat for five years, and you yeah. get out and it's, it's a Christmas tree on the it's, <laughs> it's a whole lot more problems than getting something that's sort of 80 or 100 years old going. How many cars have you got here now, totally? Uh, so just for the museum, we've got about 320, and then we've also got the Jaguar Dome Heritage Trust here, which is about another 70 odd wow. Jags. Right, okay. And also, we're just going to quickly walk us around some of the stuff that you've done to the, if that's okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, tell, tell us what, what you've so been doing to it. Before it went to Silverstone, I had a mechanic who's been here 16 years, said he hasn't seen it run and move. So I yeah. don't think it had been run for possibly you know, over 15 years. The first thing you do is get it down. You have to clean, drain all the old fuel out of it, clean all the fuel lines out, clean all the carburetors out, get the fuel system working, get some fuel onto the car, because it won't run like that. No. Then you go through the ignition system, make sure you've got a spark, uh, and get the thing running. Yeah. Actually, to be fair, this fired up relatively easily. Yeah. A bit of fresh fuel in it. I mean, really, this was sat for over 15 years. Yeah. A bit of fuel in it, which fires right up, yeah. right lovely. So yeah. you can't you can't go wrong. Uh, brakes were the problem, so you yeah. can go around the brakes, and clean everything up, change the seals if you need to. Where you go? So it was relatively easy. A couple of days on it, would have got it up to a sort of really good serviceable we'll running condition. Bring my car up here for the Which same service. <laughs> <laughs> anything that we think we should talk about in terms of the car and anything different? The only around? thing I know, which I yeah. found out the other day, is the badges yeah. are the wrong the way. way. The badge is the wrong way. Okay, okay. Yeah. at the back. <laughs> yeah. Controversy. It's actually a little bit. I think the, the, they the, should the, be. this one's the right way around that one is. The theory is because it was a laugh off the line, Yeah. did, did they run out of badges? Did they not? Did, Could possibly did, have done something. Yeah. Put so. that on the foot. Yeah. Yeah, so that it arrived like that, like that's that. not something that we've that's changed that. That's yeah. from the factory like that. And yeah. as far as we know, the car's completely original, yeah. it's not being restored. No, no, it's no. Around, no. And any other top tips you give stag owners about um, how to look after the car? Essentially, I think they were quite known for overheating. Yeah, they were. Well, so essentially, the engine is a very good engine. It is. And I think if you strip yeah. everything down and rebuild it properly, yeah. they're fine. So I think if you were seriously running one, you know, you yeah. can strip and rebuild them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're, and they're fairly reliable. Yeah. So I must admit with this, after Silverson we sat upstairs, one of the rear wheel cylinders um, just decided to leak. Yeah. So things like regularly changing, changing brake fluid, you know, yeah. to save you hassle. Yeah, okay. You know. And what's the kind of long term plan for cars like this, guys? How challenging is it looking forward 10, 15, 20 years beyond? I think uh, for us it's a resource um, thing. The more cars people offer us to look after, we've got to make some sort of distinction at some point about making sure we can still look after the ones we've already got in yeah. the same way yeah. that we do now. So, um, But that's why uh, we've got all the membership scheme and events that we've got at the museum and yeah. all of the money, because it's a charitable trust, it all goes back into any donations, memberships, yeah. museum entry all goes back into looking after the cars that right. we've got. Fantastic. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's good. Thanks for your time today. Mom, that'd be really good. It'd be awesome if we could have a little drive in it, or if one of you guys could drive it, we could yeah. go out and see it. We can do yeah, that, drive yeah. Around. That'd be awesome. So maybe we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Top yeah. work. First time, oh yes. Just listen to that V8 burble, it's just immense, isn't it? It really is great. <laughs> We're off out to make a move, there we are. So, uh, wave bye bye to <laughs> James. <laughs> Better edge out very, very gently. Obviously, running this car, very mindful, of course, of the history, and that I must be extremely careful with how we drive it. Because, and all uh, the speed bumps. <laughs> and all the speed bumps, yeah. So we're not gonna go onto the main road. Um, could be the uh, the last stag heading down to Bournemouth with us yeah. later on. Should or be really pub great. garden maybe, that Yeah, right. oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, isn't yeah. it? Absolutely lovely. <laughs> Look at this guys, living the dream. We talk about sharing the classic stream, this is what it's all about. The last ever production stag made in the UK and uh, we're out driving it for the channel. It's just awesome, glad you could join us with us. Immensely grateful to Kat and the guys here yeah. at the uh, British Motor Museum. Nice to be involved. Yeah, it really is a joy. 
and to look out over that immaculately pristine bonnet is yeah i mean mine's good it's just not not wet anywhere near like this there were it? worse friday mornings that i've had yeah definitely, definitely <laughs> absolutely martin was saying the car's not really been out since last year when we were at silverstone yeah and uh, it may not go out again for a little while until people want to show it or drive it or whether. Yeah, well, it's kind of dependent on uh, what whether people inquire about using, uh, filming, photographing, yeah. all that sort of stuff dictates what we get ready to go get, out. Yeah, yeah. And who actually owns this stag then? So it's, it's owned by the museum, uh, okay. the trust behind the museum, okay. the British right. Motor Industry Heritage Trust. So yeah. We own, out of the 300 odd cars, we, we own the majority of them. A couple of them are on long term loan, but most of them are owned by the trust. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, it's some awesome work that you guys are doing here, you know, preserving all this heritage of ours. Okay. Yeah, I was saying to the guys um, when we were sort of prepping all the filming, that it's amazing uh, that like something so simple like a car that you see every day has so many memories attached to it oh, to people yeah. that come in. It's so true, yeah. I want to say thank you to Peter Robinson for uh, introducing us, a shout out for him and also for the guys down under, down in Oz. Um, thanks for all your great suggestions. To get to see this car in the Rhône to be driving it um, is just amazing. So what's your key thing about the stag would you say because of the filming it's actually the first car that they uh, in the workshop taught me to drive um in case you needed driving around in it right so actually okay. i think that it will always have a little special place now as the <laughs> first one of the collection that um that you've driven that too. i've had a little drive around that's in, awesome so it's that's really, really nice. great and i was very um surprised but i don't know why um because I, I have a manual car and I just assumed that automatics were, you know, relatively modern. Yeah. So I when I got in it, I was expecting it to be a lot less familiar yeah. to me um, as a driver, but it, it wasn't. No. Although the ignition's on the op opposite side, which, which was does really throw you actually, odd. I know. Yeah. And, the, and the way you, you flick the engine on as well actually yeah. is counter intuitive, isn't it? Because a couple of times I've turned my engine off and uh, <laughs> yeah, turned it back on again just, uh, when it's running which has graunched the, the starter motor which has been brilliant but... yeah really when I sat in and I was like oh Martin what, how do I turn <laughs> it on and yeah. he was like it's the other side on this side that's yeah, right yeah so yeah. That, was, that was really odd yeah, it's but... so much heavier as well um, yeah. than my car is yeah this the car for its time was just amazing in terms of the innovation we take it for granted yeah. now these days Harry's got an MGB GT, but uh, his hasn't got power steering on it. Um, yeah. This has, and it's, it does make a difference. But even then, it's still heavier than modern day yeah. cars, obviously. But, you know, this was 1977. It's um, a long time ago. But you know, having hazard lights, electric windows, seat belts, wing mirrors, you know, all these were kind of quite great innovations for their time. Heated rear windscreen in, yeah. the, um, in the hard top. I'm loving the little seatbelt hook. So oh, up behind? Yes, I know, yeah. oh, that's great actually. Yeah, and the Borg Warner gearbox, they are absolutely bomb proof uh, if they're kept in good order and um, fairly easy to maintain in terms of servicing. The reality of the 1970s was, wasn't as perhaps glam as we like to look back yeah. on now, maybe through rose tinting glasses <laughs> a bit. But anyhow, um, what a product of the 70s um, with the fantastic design of the, of the of Triumph Stag, yeah light on here so I don't want to conk out half the round. <laughs> so I'll head over towards the boys in just a second. Well, all I can say is Harry the Stag. <laughs> what a great car. That's been a real privilege Kat. Thank yeah, you so much. That's right. uh, it's a testimony to all the great work they do here at the museum. Now, if you'd like to see one of only two ever made 4x4 stags that exist on this planet, then click the video and watch that film. You'll also see a lot more about Bolly the Stag too.